This is the morning office for March 27th. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Let your ways be known upon earth, your saving power among the nations. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, your only Son was lifted up, that he might draw the whole world to himself. May we walk this day in the way of the cross, and always be ready to share its weight, declaring your love for all the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. The portion of the Psalter appointed for today is Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me. O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha, and gloat over me turn back because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. This is the message we have from Christ and proclaim to you, that God is light, in whom there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with God while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light, as God is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, the Son of God, cleanses us from all our sins. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, the one who is faithful and just will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It has been observed that the life of Christ is punctuated by silences. There is the silence of his birth, the silence of the manger, the fact that in many cases, perhaps most cases, the miracles of Jesus are done in silence. He's not shouting incantations. He does these things with uh, a lot of fanfare. Uh, he goes away periodically to pray. Certainly he's praying in Gethsemane when we come to this point in Holy Week. Uh, the cross is a, an exercise in silence for the most part, as is Jesus' trial before Pilate where he refuses to speak. Maurice Zundel, a writer on this subject, says that silence is the only thing that reveals the depths of life. It would perhaps pay us, repay us to consider the silences in the life of Jesus as much as the words of Jesus as a way of learning how he lived his life, learning what example God was setting for us in the life of Jesus, how it is that perhaps in the key moments of our lives, the key moments of our lives of faith, silence is an important and godlike quality. Think perhaps today about what the silences are in your life, which of them are holy, which of them are meaningful to you, 
where may there be words or other sound that are interfering with the solemnity of the silence that otherwise should be att attending your presence with God as you go through your days. I ask your prayers for the day, for the world, and for the church. We continue to pray for the Holy Land. I ask your prayers for the governments of the countries in the, that area of the world, that they will find ways to attain unity within themselves, silence some of the factions that call them to violence, that call them to bloodshed. That they will hear the better angels of their natures and will govern in peace and in justice. That in some way or another, we, in our sadly imperfect human way, will be able to use political institutions for the sake of peace for a change and rather for the making of war, for death, and for destruction. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon, give us grace to accept joyfully the sufferings of the present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.